Hello, my friends. Welcome. This is Father Nelson Medina, your host, and this is Your Catholic Faith Reloaded, episode number 13. What we do here is to revisit the foundations of our Catholic faith. So this is a back to basics in Catholic faith. And in these days, we are reflecting upon sin, which is not a word that you hear frequently. Um, we can say we can say that sin is avoided as a word is avoided. Probably mm, some preachers feel that if they speak about sin, they will uh, lose followers or hearers, and uh, and and that's a really that's a really a shame because sin, as we have seen in the last episodes. Sin is at the very core of the teaching of our faith because the entire Bible is about overcoming sin. This is the, 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 the big message of the Bible, that sin has not the last word. Sin can be and should be overcome, and it was overcome by the power of the grace of God. But there is a process in these and that process is what we describe with the expression, the history of salvation. That's what we describe. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's sin. And that's about sin. But what's the essence of sin? Is, uh, is it only the transgression of a rule? Uh, is um, like bad behavior? Is like, for example, if you are um, driving on a highway, and the speed limit is 60 miles per hour, for example, and you go 65 miles per hour, is that a sin? So is every transgression a sin? And who's the one establishing the rules? Why should I care about not transgressing the rules, not crossing the line when it comes to, to the rules uh, of particular laws. Is it the same? Is it the same? The law of the Lord, is it comparable to the laws of any country? For example, your country, my country? Is that sin? Is that, uh, is all about, is it all about mm, just uh, following the rules and being well behaved? Well, that's exactly what we are about to mm, take into account in this program. Uh, we go, we, we still are, in lesson number two. And uh, let's read along. We are moral beings, able to make choices which will affect ourselves and others, either for good or for bad. So this is the, this is the beginning of the theology about sin, that we are moral beings. And being moral means that you have some degree of freedom. You don't have absolute freedom. So life is not that you imagine something and, and you can do it. That idea that if you can imagine it, uh, you can do it, no. Uh, or to say that uh, willing means um, being capable or being able to do, no. It's, it's, it's far more than that. But we have to admit that we have some degree of freedom, degree of freedom. Some choices we can, we, we can make, some choices. Not every choice. For example, I did not choose the country I was born in. I did not choose it. So this is my country. Colombia is my country. And I didn't choose it. I didn't choose either my parents. I didn't choose what was my first language. My first language was Spanish. So English, as you probably have noticed, uh, long time ago, English is my second language. I didn't choose it to be that way, but there are some choices that we can make. And insofar as there are choices that we can make, we are moral beings. That's the first step in this uh, uh, reflection. God has given us a free will to make choices concerning good and evil. And at this point, it is good to remember 
that the, what matters is your reaction, your reaction. Same thing can happen to different people and every person will react in a different way. So it is the reaction what matters. Good, let's continue. Although sin has damaged our free will, it has not completely destroyed it. So if I choose what is evil, what is not good, it is not only a bad choice, it is only damaging, damaging my capacity for choosing, which is very profound if you think about it. It damages my capacity, my ability also to choose what is right. And you can see that when a person, when a person is moving uh, in the direction of what is bad, most probably, most probably that person is taking, is making one bad choice after the other, and then another bad choice, and so on. So the capacity of choosing well can be damaged by sin. But even in those circumstances, you have some degree of freedom. Okay. Through the power of grace, which God gives us, we can choose to avoid sin and to, to cooperate with God in fulfilling his will. Sin is not simply a choice between something good or something evil. Okay, so now we have a different and a, a sort of next step here. Sin is not simply a choice between something good or something evil. It is a choice of ourselves over God. Wow. Yes. Yes, now everything falls in place. When we choose what is wrong, what is evil, we are not only accepting the presence of evil in our life, we are also putting ourselves over God. Because if God has commanded something, which of course is for our own good, if God has chosen something, has established something that is for our good, and we choose what is wrong, knowing of course what is good and what is God's will, evidently, evidently, we are putting ourselves we are setting us over God. Sin is choosing to do what God has forbidden, a choice which sets us over God as our own authority. And you know what? This was the sin of Satan. So in every, in every voluntary, voluntary choice against God the will, God's will, what we are doing is putting ourselves, putting ourselves, it is choosing ourselves over God. And that kind of pride is exactly Satan's sin. Because of his pride, he wanted to rule over God and was cast out of heaven. God never keeps anything good from us. So, what God is establishing is, is what is good for us, which means that in choosing what is wrong, we are setting as ourselves over God, and at the same time, we are damaging ourselves. If God forbids something, it is because it is detrimental to our eternal well-being, which means that the seal the seal of love is in everything that God has commanded to us. And in taking distance, in setting us apart from God's will, we are not only pretending to be over God, but we are, we are also destroying ourselves, destroying what is good, what is better for us. Any choices that are directly contrary to God's will are sins. Any choices directly contrary to God's will are sins. So this is the, the very essence. I think in very simple terms, 
this catechesis is telling us what's the essence of sin. And it is good to keep this teaching very clear in our minds in order to avoid what is contrary to God's will. Because now we understand that that would be, that would constitute us as followers of Satan. And that also would be detrimental, would be destroying, would be like destroying ourselves, destroying our freedom. Even our capacity to choose is damaged because of our bad choices. But there's hope. There's hope. If we are on this earth, there's hope. Hope for us because God is always able and willing to provide clarity to our minds, light to our conscience, and grace to move on from sin to his kingdom. May the Lord bless you. Thank you for being here. I'm Father Nelson Medina, and I'll wait for you next time. Take care. God bless.